Good morning, and welcome to the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Uh, I'm Andrew Schwartz. I'm Vice President for External Relations here at CSIS, and I'm joined by my colleagues, who I'll introduce to you in a minute. Um, this briefing will be available later on Facebook today. CSIS has a Facebook page, which I urge all of you to visit. It's also available um, video and audio and transcript on CSIS.org. Um, and with that, we'll get started. Uh, also, for you iTunes users, um, this will be on uh, the Beyond Campus section of iTunes University. Um, my colleagues, Andrew Cutchins, uh, Sharon Squasoni, and Janusz Bogajski, are some of the top experts in the world um, with this region. Um, and they've got a lot to say about various things uh, that are associated with this visit. Um, in addition, um, you'll find before you a, a, an, an example of our critical questions, and this is uh, Sharon Squassoni's um, critical questions on the Nuclear Security Summit. Uh, this will also be at CSIS.org. With that, I'd like to uh, introduce my colleague, Dr. Andrew Cutchins, who directs our Russia program. Thanks very much, Andrew. It's a great pleasure to be here, uh, and thanks for, uh, for joining us this morning for our, uh, our briefing. <clears throat> and I promise I won't... Uh, uh, talk about uh, my personal over-under on Tiger Woods' performance in the Masters coming up this week. Now, the, um, uh, the Start One uh, Replacement Treaty, which is going to be uh, signed in Prague on Thursday, uh, I want to beware of overselling the importance of this, of this agreement, but it is, it is really significant for uh, the U.S.-Russia relationship, the so-called reset in the U.S.-Russia relationship, and also uh, President Obama's ambitious goals for nuclear security and, and further reductions in, in uh, uh, nuclear, nuclear weapons. Um, I don't want to oversell it, but a long journey begins with the first step, and if you didn't have this first step, then pretty much both of those agendas would be uh, severely, severely uh, hampered. And it was extremely important that uh, uh, this agreement be reached before the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty in May. Uh, as well as, of course, the nuclear summit coming up here in Washington next week, which I'm sure my colleague Sharon will talk, talk more about. Um, <clears throat> you know, about a month ago, it's also, this, the agreement is also important for President Obama's political capital, both domestically and more so inter internationally. You know, when he was first elected, my sense was that this guy had a chance to be <clears throat> either one of the greatest presidents in, in American history because of the circumstances or an unsuccessful uh, one-term president. And about a month ago, it was looking more like the, uh, the former than the latter. And with the, uh, the combination of the, uh, the health care bill passing and the uh, Start One Replacement Treaty, uh, he's uh, looking considerably more successful in this political capital. And again, not only important here at home, but it's also extremely important for him abroad and how he's viewed by other international, international leaders. Now, for the U.S.-Russia relationship, which I'll talk about uh, mostly in my, my few minutes, uh, for the reset, uh, there have been three key uh, issues on security relations that have been driving the Obama administration's desire to improve relations with, uh, with Moscow. The first and most important has been Iran and the, uh, the, uh, the urgency of, uh, of their nuclear weapons uh, program. The second has been Afghanistan and the much larger bet that the Obama administration has placed or higher priority. The